darkness, when in fact the fool is the one that says there is no God. And the funny thing is, is that the amount of faith it takes to believe and, and without even talking about the God of the Bible, because obviously there's only one God, and we know that it's the God of the Bible. But if you, just, if you just don't even narrow it down to the God of the Bible, just say that God exists, that there is a God that is real, that exists. It takes more faith to believe that there is no God than there is to believe that there is a God and a creator. It literally is going to take more faith in relying on things that you can't observe and things that, um, that don't make sense naturally to believe that there was no God. And the reason why I say all these things is because when you, if you really do truly care about the truth and you study the creation and you study biology and you study geology and you study everything, the world around you, when you, when you start going in depth and really learning about these things, I don't see how you can't be blown away by the level of sophistication that is involved in every life form well, you know, and every non-living thing, just, just how critical everything is. And I'm not going to take too much time tonight to go into all of these details, but a real simple thing that I, that I like to... to when I run across atheists, obviously what they need to hear is the gospel. Sometimes they don't even want you to get that far. So what I do is I don't, I try not to spend, you know, a lot of time, you know, because I don't want to waste time with people. But if they won't even let me get in the gospel, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll hit them with one little piece of information. Because I think this makes sense. If you're going to claim to be real science-oriented person, Say, so just, just think about our, how, how all of our life works together. Think about how the plants rely on, uh, many plants rely on being pollinated and, and being fertilized from insects, right? From flies, from bees, from different insects, from butterflies, you know, all these different things. That, and they need each other to survive. It's, you can't have one without the other. You know, the, the, the bees need the flowers. If the flowers all died off, then the bees are going to die off. They, you know, they have to be there together. And for reproduction, they both need to be there simultaneously. So that they can't just, you can't just have one organism come into being without the other one coming to be into being by chance. Okay? And Everything about the Big Bang and evolutionary theory is all just about chance. And it's just these crazy, you know, improbabilities that any of this could ever happen, even just one happening, even just the, the development of insects and things like that. You know, how, how, are, the, how are the plants, how are these things going to reproduce without having the other? And, and we have no evidence that shows that, that there is any way that these, these, um, these life forms, are called, you know, including plants, could have gotten to the point that they were without, you know, and, and made a transition to requiring what they require. There, there's no intermediate steps. And, and that's just one really small, minor example and you see examples like that everywhere. I mean, you, you start going, it's like, it's not just birds and bees. It's not just the flowers. It applies among so many different things. And if you look even just at the human anatomy and biology, you look all the way down through a microscope to the cellular level, and you look at the complexities, you look at, you, you cannot look at these things and not say, wow, what a great design. All of the processing, all of the efficiencies in our blood cells, in the, in the, the, the transmission and, and creating, you know, using all of the externals from the environment, food that gets ingested into your mouth, that goes down to your belly, the sunlight you receive that, that, that hits your skin, and the, the vitamin D that you, you know, and, and 
there's there's just so there's so much right I, I i could i'm falling over myself trying to speak because my mind is racing so fast on all of the various things that that when you study really close up and look and look at all of the scientific facts that you can and all the things that are observable around us how incredibly sophisticated and complex they are and to think that all of this stuff it's all just by chance that is lunacy and that is a very foolish thing to think that everything all by chance all random no intelligence to it at all it just sort of happened and here we are